So to get us started, we have a 30 minute demo lined up that will walk you through these services, kind of showcasing their advanced capabilities and highlighting how they can elevate your research process. We're going to start off with Connect, and we're fortunate to have Charles Jamerlin here to give us a quick demo. Charles is a senior software engineer at Cloud Research and is the product owner of Connect. After that, we'll hear from Blake Wardrop, a project manager at Cloud Research and product owner of Prime Panels. And then we'll hear from Chesky Rosenzweig, senior research and product scientist and product owner of Sentry. Last but not least, we'll hear from Shimmy Krumholz, who is our senior client manager and head of our managed research services. So um, to kick us off, I'll have Charles share your screen and get started. All right, welcome. Hello, everyone. So Connect, let's talk about Connect. So a little bit of a background at first. Um, so cloud research, you know, for many years, as we all you know, know, hope to know that we are a recognized in the industry for our contributions and authority and data quality, right, in the online research space, right? So we took all our learnings, our successes in this space, and then we set to build out our own online recruitment platform um, with not only data quality as like the top, top, top priority, but also focusing on, you know, user experience, things like intuitiveness, user friendliness, a modern and elegant UI, and of course, affordability and cost, right? The higher data quality that we can provide, the more intuitive the UI, the less sample that you have to throw out and, you know, essentially the more time that you would save. So in the summer of 2022, uh, we launched Connect and it is already one of the fastest growing platforms within the online recruitment space. We've experienced on average, you know, 20, 25% month over month growth and, you know, even at times 40%, right? So that's, um, you know, it's, it's something that we're really ap appreciative of. And the growth is measured across both the researcher and the participant side and overall usage. So, you know, we like to think that the product speaks for itself and we're very grateful for the incredible adoption. At any given time, you know, you um, over 20,000 active and highly engaged participants are available to, you know, for you, uh, the researchers. And this continues to grow, right, on a daily, monthly basis. You know, our participants are truly engaged and really outside of just earning money on Connect, we, we really feel like they really want to, you know, contribute to the success of your projects, which is evident through some of the feedback that we receive, you know, um, from, from them directly to us or things that we read on our subreddit. And also from the feedback that they actually leave uh, on the projects that you run on Connect through our internals ratings feature, right? So you can see here on the screen, there's a, just a sample of researchers who do trust Connect, um, some very familiar companies and logos there. Now let's talk about some unique features um, that make connect, stand out from the rest of the bunch, right? Number one, our demographics targeting. Now we have over a hundred uh, qualifications or attributes that you can target on connect that are frequently used, you know, um, in academia, uh, clinical, clinical and medical applications, you know, areas of political science and other researcher industries. So on the participant side, you know, which I have here on the screen, there's like an about you page, right? Which is uh, where participants get no uh, notified, you know, continually and they answer these questions. And then on the researcher side of things, you know, um, you could just simply look for the qualification you want to target and set it up uh, with an easy to use form. If a project that you're looking to run um, is, is uh, needs a qualification that, that doesn't, doesn't already exist, you know, simply, you know, request it uh, through our request the demographic uh, form on the on the app itself. And we'll go ahead and add it for you, all right? And just, you know, within a couple of days, a week or so, we'll have thousands of responses ready for you to use. We also have a one-click rep sample match feature um, that I think is very useful uh, for Connect. With one click, you know, you can match the targets to a rep, uh, representative U.S. census sample. And the beauty of how we execute this feature versus uh, other platforms is that you could add to these targets, right? So if you want to add, say, household income or education, by all means, you know, um, go for it. Um, and all this too at no extra cost, which again, you know, the, 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 the point of affordability and cost, we take pride in. Um, and then lastly, we have, we have quotas to help you refine your targets even more. You know, you can, you know, within a specific qualification that you target, let's say race, um, you want to do, you know, 80% out of 100 participants, that are, you know, a Caucasian and Afri African American, and then a 20% of Asian American descent, you can do that as well. So it's helping you to further refine your sample to a level of granularity. Um, all right, next feature we have is Connect Team, something that we're very proud about. You know, early on in our user testing of Connect, you know, one of the pain points that was brought up was like people who were in a lab setting using these online recruitment platforms. Uh, there were really three main issues that came about. 
Well, number one, that allows to have to share an account, right? I mean, that in itself is security liability, right? Um, number two, the fact that people are sharing an account, uh, there's issues with access. Like, you know, I mean, I don't want Jane to see my project, but because we're sharing an account, she'll see it. Um, and then thirdly, funding, right? Again, because the account is shared, people could just use the money that is in that account at their at their free will. So from that, you know, Teams was born and essentially we created a feature that addressed those three main problems. Any Connect researcher can create a team, uh, which they would then become the team owner of, right? So on the screen here, I am I have a team called AI Training. I am the owner of that. I have a few projects there. I've got seven members in this particular team. I can give access to the members of that team, um, it, you know, read only or editor access, right? So that solves the, the access issue that was brought upon earlier. Um, additionally, we also share a, a shared wallet. We also support a shared wallet. Uh, so here we have $450 in, our, in my wallet here in my team. And I could also give access to team members, whether they can use it or not. So one of the, on the screen here, you can see that if I'm launching a project and I'm within that team, I can either use my funds or if I have access to the team wallet, I can use those funds to launch the project, right? So at the end of the day, you know, no more shared accounts, no more guesswork on who spent what. We also have just recently launched a new feature that's unique to us called uh, the clinical pre-screeners, right? It is part of our premium demographics, and you can target participants on a specific clinical scale, right? From depression to anxiety, eating disorders, or a combination. Um, and it leverages our quota system, you know, to help you refine your targets, you know, within that specific scale. So for instance, in the example, you can see that in the depression questionnaire, uh, we wanted people who fell between zero to seven on the scale of 20, 20 participants, those that fell between eight and 14 to be 50 and so on and so forth. And this gives you like tremendous value because it's giving you faster results, right? It, you don't need to sift through the data anymore because we're giving you participants that match from the start. And also it minimizes you know, data bias, right? So because participants are, are answering these uh, at a separate uh, time prior to your projects being run, right? In the about you section. So it definitely helps with that. And last, but certainly not least, we have our one of our favorite features, dark mode, right? Um, you know, most platforms these days, they have support for dark mode, you know, benefits reducing eye strain, helps you sleep better at night, battery life, it looks cool. But, you know, it's, I think, and I think I'm pretty sure about this, we may be one of the few uh, platforms to support this. So we wanted to make sure that we support it from day one. Okay, let's talk a little bit about data quality, right? So as I said earlier in the, in the demo, that uh, um, data quality is one of our number one uh, priorities, right, when it comes to Connect. So we have a very rigorous onboarding process for our participants. Uh, we have a, C, uh, a screener, uh, which Hesky will talk a little bit more about later, uh, with closed and open-ended questions, um, kind of a first step. And we actually have a team on staff that just manually verifies the open-ended questions uh, using our knowledge uh, of certain patterns as well as technology to identify, you know, fraudsters or low quality entrants. And lastly, if necessary, we require them to verify their identity, you know, uh, by uploading, let's say, a, a passport or a license with a selfie, that sort of thing. Um, and then once they're on the platform, right, we're going to continually monitor them, right? Now that they're on there, it doesn't mean they're off the hook. We're going to be looking at things like rejection rates, you know, suspicious behavior, and you know, maybe robot-like activity on the site itself, right? So we're continually watching to make sure that we keep the good actors on the platform themselves. And then lastly, we run a monthly data quality tracker. Uh, we're still working through September's results, but essentially we sample 10% of our population, uh, you know, with a project of our own, with three uh, with three attention checks, and you know, we're very happy that with the results that they come back in the high 90s, and even in August, it's come back at 99%. So really do stand by the quality of the participants we have on Connect. So some future directions uh, for Connect, you know, uh, we're continually innovating, we're continually bringing out features, we're always listening to your feedback, the researchers, and how we can improve and give more value to you at the end of the day. So number one, data quality enhancements. That's something that, again, is the forefront of our priorities. And we want to make sure that we continue to add more checkpoints, more technology. Uh, so we can we can ensure that we're ahead of the fraudsters, right? And keep our participants' quality high. We have this new feature that's actually currently uh, in a private preview, but we'll be launching maybe in a month or so uh, from, from, from today. It's called templates, right? And this is really a way for us to allow you to run projects that are self-hosted within Connect. So no need to kind of go through a Qualtrics or a, um, you know, or a survey monkey for, for projects that do apply for templates that we have created, right? Uh, so that allows us to do a couple of things. One is to help us improve data quality because they are within the platform. 
Um, and two, there are certain features around it that, you know, that currently um, we don't support that you may need in the future. Things like projects that, that take less than a minute for micro tasks, right? Things for AI training, that sort of thing. So that's something that exciting that we'll be launching pretty soon. We'll start out with two templates, uh, one for data labeling and media annotation, and another one for the MTurk, uh, MTurk Crowd HTML uh, support. Um, and that's if you're already using that at MTurk, their, uh, their Crowd HTML, I guess, language or platform. You could just copy and paste that directly into our templating system, and it'll run you know, exactly the same way, but with much higher data quality. Also, we're looking to expand internationally. Uh, you know, we've been U.S. only up until this point. So we're looking to expand our participant recruitment to other English speaking countries like the UK, Australia, Canada, you know, by the end of the year. And also we're looking to do a tighter integration with our prime panels platform, which Blake will talk a little bit more uh, about next. Um, and you know, as we're seeing a bit more of a demand for you know, international uh, projects to, to be run on Connect. One of the features that we're looking to release you know, in the near future is this diary longitudinal you know, uh, workflow set of feature. Right now, Connect uh, works very well for diary longitudinal studies, you know, with recons accurate rates reaching as high as 85% and above. And so while you can run them now in Connect, uh, we're actively working to make these kinds of studies um, easier to set up on Connect, right? So where you may have to just put in your, your project once, set up how many days you want it to run, you know, seven days, 10 days. And then, you know, when you submit it, it creates all the underlying projects, the days, uh, schedule launches so that you can have to only set it up once and I have it to manage and set up, you know, individual projects. So just again, to give you back more value, to give you back more of your time. And then 2024 and beyond, right? Um, we're excited for that because we have a lot of cool things that are on the, on the, on the plate. You know, um, I said earlier with Connect Teams, we're looking to expand the accounting features to maybe give you better reporting in terms of who spent what. I know there's some demand for this across labs that are already using Teams. So that's one thing to look forward to. Uh, a loyalty program, you know, we might want to include the ability to give out points and rewards for engagement, right? To get away, uh, to give our participants a way to engage more in the platform and also the researchers to also want to use uh, Connect more because they may be rewarded with things like, you know, prizes, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, and also mobile application is kind of somewhere there along around the horizon, um, you know, uh, something that we can definitely use and uh, leverage some of the native features of the application to do more specific targeting or, you know, more unique features that we can deliver on Connect. Um, and, you know, and a couple more things that are, you know, kind of top secret in, in the pipeline. Just we want to make sure that, again, we're continually hearing your voice and making sure that we can deliver, um, you know, the best product out there in the market. Uh, so at this point, I will turn it over to, uh, to Blake to talk about Prime Panels. So Prime Panels. Prime Panels is a, another option to collect data online. Um, it is completely separate from the Connect platform. Uh, Connect was built, is, is Cloud Research's proprietary panel. It really was built from the ground up for academic research. And it really is by far the best option you have to do research online. Um, I've been in the market research industry for a decade and I've used, I've run probably over thousands of studies, every major supplier, and there really is nothing that compares to Connect in terms of the like level of engagement of the participants, the retention, retention rate for longitudinal studies, and really just the data quality that you get from the uh, those users. All that being said, uh, there are some shortcomings with Connect just because Connect is relatively a new platform. Um, and this is where Prime Panels comes in. It connects you to the larger market research world. Um, so this is over 350 market research panels globally, allowing you access to millions of participants. Um, this allows you to find very niche populations in a much larger volume that you can get on Connect, at least for the time being, as well as sample internationally in over 32 countries and languages. Um, a few of examples of studies that we've recently run on Connect. Um, I had a client run a study looking for U.S. residents that own their own vehicle. Um, they were able to get a good portion of the sample on Connect, but I think they needed something like 10,000 completes. So once Connect, we exhausted the Connect sample, then we Prime Panel stepped in and we were able to get the, the final couple thousand that they needed. Um, another example was a client looking for 
um, U.S. residents that recently ate at a fast food restaurant within the last 30 days. Um, another study where it was a healthcare study in Canada, the U.S., U.K., and Singapore. Uh, they were able to get their sample for the U.S. on Connect, but then use prime panels for Canada, U.K., and Singapore. Um, so one major difference between Connect and Prime Panels is with Connect, you can you pre-qualify participants to participate in your study. With Prime Panels, you can include screening questions within your study and really narrow down on that very like niche population that you're looking to target. Um, this allows you to target for very specific behaviors like have you eaten at a fast food restaurant in the last 30 days or have you visited a national park in the last 30 days? So certain things that we can't get with Connect, we can use prime panels to capture those participants. So with these large market research panels, it does come with a lot of drawbacks. Uh, so traditionally, they weren't used for academic research just because there were a lot of data quality concerns. Um, there was a lot of bots, fraudulent respondents, and really just low quality responses. Um, so what we have done is we've developed Sentry, um, which is an industry leading pre-survey vetting tool. Um, and with Sentry, it sits in front of every prime panel study and we run every participant through there before they're allowed to enter your study. Um, and it removes a large number of bots and low quality participants that um, you typically see when using these platforms. Um, so in summary, you should always use Connect as your go-to platform for research, but in cases where Connect is unable to deliver on the target you're looking to achieve, that's when Prime Panels come in, comes in as almost a supplement. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Heskey, who's going to go more into our data quality and how we clean up the sample so you're able to use it. So yeah, as Blake was saying, um... We filter all the participants that we gather through all of these 300 plus uh, market research panel partners that we have um, within Prime Panels. And we're able to ensure that the data quality that comes in from them that ultimately gets access to your study uh, is good and is high quality. Um, and we initially developed this methodology of using a pre-survey screener. Um, a couple of years back, we published a paper with uh, some colleagues in 2019, just about the process of accessing this really large market research uh, pool that's out there, but putting them through a good pre-screen to actually get the best that you can out of those um, panel sources. Um, and we, we built Sentry um, to be able to do just that, um, and we, we think of Sentry as the backbone of quality across many of our products. Um, you heard Charles um, mention the data quality on Connect, and uh, Sentry is one piece of quality in, in everything that we do. Um, and the way that Sentry works is uh, within a very short pre-survey environment just before someone might be able to gain access to a, a, an actual survey from a researcher, uh, Sentry will present them with a series of questions that's pulled from really large libraries of different sorts of questions that tap into the different like key respondent characteristics that participants need to have in order to be high quality. So these questions are vetting things basic like basic attention, like honesty, um, or acquiescence bias, or saying yes indiscriminately to different questions. And you're, you're able to also see all the data that comes from Sentry and all the flags that um, Sentry is catching and blocking. And um, that's what's on the screen here now. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're we running Sentry in the background on Prime Panels and many of our other platforms. Um, but it is also available to kind of plug and play if you're gathering data elsewhere. Um, you know, it's just a trading of links, redirects, and then participants can come through Sentry first. Uh, so yeah, and so again, participants who uh, pass Sentry are sent uh, on and allowed into a survey, and participants who fail Sentry are, are actually not allowed in and typically sent back into the source that they came from with, with a, a no thank you, this is not the right study for you. Um, but yeah, so while Sentry is asking these questions that measure these behaviors, there's also a lot of technology that's being run in the background 
looking for fraudulent activity, things like um, translating the uh, questions outside of the target uh, language, target audience. Um, if people are duplicate IPs, are suspicious fingerprints, um, and all, all sorts of technological features. And it's this mix of the behavioral vetting through these uh, large question libraries that are pulled together with the technology that uh, makes it effective. Um, and as, as Blake was saying, this is kind of what helps prime panels stand out a little bit um, from some of the other ways to access market research sample. Um, so not every not everybody will advertise that they're using market research sample. If you think about um, companies like uh, Qualtrics and yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Lucid, but these are other ways where you'll end up drawing sample oftentimes from the same pool, just without the um, added protection of Sentry. Um, so we, we really consider it critical uh, when we do research to add a pre-survey tool that can bring up the baseline of quality so that you you can have data that you can rely on a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's that's the background on, on Sentry. But yeah, if in terms of future directions um, for Sentry and Prime Panels, um, where we think about them growing together. Um, so when we develop new vetting languages in Sentry, we can open up Prime Panels to new countries. We, we have like 30 plus at this point. Um, but we're we're going to keep expanding there, and of course we need to um, continue to build out new tools to stop new kinds of fraud. Um, and we've been doing that. We, we have a, a module within Sentry that taps into ChatGPT related behaviors to uh, try to stay ahead of, of that issue. Um, but on the whole. Um, we are also hoping to integrate our systems more um, so that, for example, if you want to run a study like the one Blake was describing, where you're collecting data from the U.S. and other countries that Connect isn't in yet, um, you can actually just come into Connect and you know get the sample there, but you know, click a little button and then prime, your, your prime panel's data can come in uh, from the same kind of uh, place without having to go to our, our other tool. So, we're looking forward to being able to offer that that sort of integration uh, in the future. And with that, I will turn it over to Shimmy. So just to give a bit of background, um, on a very top level, managed research is generally used for projects that are difficult to run via our DIY tools um, or projects that generally just have a high level of complexity, making them more feasible or more efficient to be outsourced. So this is gonna to apply to a lot of different research needs, including recruitment for hard to reach samples, uh, A to Z project execution, study design and strategy, survey programming, data analysis, and quality assurance. Um, and I'll go over some of the unique features and common use cases that researchers will typically look to manage research um, for assistance with. Uh, as far as unique features go, um, when using managed research, some of the highlights are going to include a dedicated project manager that gets assigned to you in your project. So this project manager will have years of experience running all kinds of different research projects and is very familiar with all the different sources in, in, in the space. Um, and it is, of course, there to answer any questions or provide feedback and uh, provide updates as your project moves along about how things are going. Um, not only that, but, but having a dedicated project manager can be a big time saver for you um, and a potential cost saver as well, because otherwise you might have overhead costs related to staffing, personnel, um, or just considering your own time it would take to run the project by yourself. It may sometimes make sense or be worthwhile to have an experienced project manager on your side to uh, do it for you. Managed research also offers flexibility to be customizable based on your specific needs. You can outsource whatever portion of your project is maybe causing obstacles for you. So it doesn't need to be a full A to Z engagement. It can just be um, using managed research for the participant recruitment portion of your project or just survey programming, just data analysis, you know, just to give some examples. Um, another important feature of note uh, is the managed research data quality guarantee. So Kesti spoke a lot about um, some of the things that we do on our other services for data quality, but um, along with kind of all of those data quality assurance tools being automatically included, 
Um, so this would include the Sentry system, um, but also other platform specific quality tools we would apply based on specific study requirements. Um, so aside from all those things being automatically included, we also offer up to a 100% reconciliation rate, meaning any participant you may deem to be unusable will re replace for you free of charge. Um, now, typically reconciliation rates will any be, anyway be extremely low overall due to Sentry and the other data quality assurance tools that are applied, but this just gives you an extra stopgap in case you're looking for it and you know, a lot of people understandably are. Um, so these are just some of the unique features you get when using managed research that uh, may expand what's possible with online research. Um, in terms of some common practical applications of this, here are some, some use cases um, that, you know, you might find helpful to, to think about. So some common use cases. So number one is probably um, to just gain access to increased reach and feasibility. So when we manage the project for you, it allows us to leverage relationships we've developed with specialized panels all over the globe over the last several years. Uh, these panels are not able to be accessed through our DIY tools, either because they don't offer API integration or so some other reasons. Um, we would have access to them using managed research, which opens up a lot of avenues for more niche samples uh, and things like that. Um, yeah, so uh, in addition to that, it will also, we talked a little bit about international reach before on Prime Panels. And while you can um, access certain countries internationally using Prime Panels, uh, we'll have even more reach through managed research. So, um, you know, just taking recent recent cases. So using managed research, we've recently recruited uh, from countries such as Japan, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Bolivia, Norway, Hungary, just to name a handful. Um, but many more. Uh, another common use case is for very complex study designs, such as intensive longitudinal studies. So um, whereas on, on Connect, you know, it's a really great tool for longitudinal studies. There are some cases where um, the longitudinal study is a lot greater in terms of like scope and complexity, where uh, a lot of people will turn to us to assist with. So um, just to give, you know, a, a, another example of a longitudinal study that we ran using managed research, uh, we ran a six-month-long longitudinal study where participants needed to uh, complete four-hour-long tasks every week for, um, yeah, for over the six-month period. And um, the requirement was that 70% of these participants would need to complete 70% of the weeks over the six-month period. Um, it, otherwise, the data would not have been useful to the researchers. Um, and we were able to achieve uh, over 80% of participants completing over 80% of these, you know, very long, very intensive tasks um, each week for, for six months. Um, other common use cases uh, for managed research are going to be things like app testing or IHUTs, so in-home usage testing for product testing, anything from, from tissue boxes to cereals, um, things of that nature. Um, we also do a, a decent amount of interview studies, so whether that be uh, scheduling Zoom interviews between participants and researchers, or even sometimes having participants come to a lab for in-person testing or interviews. Um, and then some of the cases we already touched on a little bit, A to Z solutions, um, survey programming and implementation, um, recruitment and data analysis, depending on what you may find valuable to outsource. Um, so we spoke a little bit about the data quality before when discussing the unique features, specifically as, as it relates to all our tools being included and the reconciliation rate guarantee. But there are some other important data quality things to consider as well, um, which I'll go into now. So since managed research allows for greater reach, it also allows for more representative samples to be attained, which is a very important aspect of data quality, of course. Um, so even for other uh, specific subsamples, like if somebody wanted a representative sample of smokers or a representative sample of, in a specific country, like in France. So those things are gonna be very difficult to achieve just using our DIY tools. Whereas because of the increased reach for managed research, we're able to uh, make those sorts of things feasible. Managed research also allows us based on uh, project specifications to hand select specific panels or participants that we know are best suited for the study uh, based on a lot of historical data that we have. So if we need a very high retention rate for a longitudinal study, we can select participants who we who have previous track records with very high retention rates. Um, or for app testing, for example, we could select panels that we have used and we know have, let's say, dedicated UX for, for downloads that 
um, you know, increase the participant um, experience and also completion rates by a significant amount. Um, so we keep track of participants also that have left incredibly detailed open-ended responses for things like diary studies, participants who maintain quality even if for tasks spanning multiple hours. And, you know, those are just some, some examples. So this selective um, targeting for panels and participants is, is a huge um, data quality advantage. Um, and then, of course, things that were previously touched on, um, like our data quality tools all automatically being being um, applied on top of, you know, all these additional ones. Um, yeah, so all of these things are kind of like unique features and use cases for managed research. If anything, I or any of the other presenters said that piqued your interest at all, I'll now open the floor to um, the question portion of the pr presentation. Sierra's question, which was, how, do, how does Connect ensure diverse recruitment of participants? Um, so rural versus urban, technological skills, et cetera. Uh, is there any targeted outreach for underrepresented groups? So yeah, it's actually a good question. It comes up quite a bit. Um, so 2024, one of our kind of uh, at least main points or things that we're going to be focusing on on the participant side is absolutely recruitment, right? Um, not necessarily just for underrepresented groups, but also just kind of overall, right? Um, we have a couple of different campaigns and different um, tactics that we're currently working on now, and we're going to spend a big amount of our resources to drive the participant uh, recruitment and engagement um, at the beginning of this of, of the upcoming year. Um, but specifically with underrepresented groups, you know, we're talking about doing things like, you know, um, extending like that campaign to maybe demographic specific communities, uh, whether it's online, right? Like, you know, forums, you know, Reddit communities of that sort. And, you know, cause we understand like if you do kind of a global uh, recruitment campaign, uh, a recruitment kind of uh, approach, you know, all numbers will go up and, you know, uh, and rising tide lifts all boats, right? So then underrepresented groups will number will go up as well. So we know that will take care of some of the numbers, right? But so we're going to spend some time to look at, you know, look at and analyze our own data and see what are, you know, hard to reach demographics, things that are underrepresented, and how can we, like, you know, kind of do more of a grassroots type of approach. Um, and I think that starts out with just basically, like, you know, uh, like I said, you know, uh, demographic specific communities, um, some targeted campaigns and ad advertising through there. Um, you know, we talked about doing things, um, you know, maybe some influencer marketing type stuff. Yeah, but that is definitely one of the things that comes up quite a bit and one of our big, you know, focal points for this year um, to to really make that more of, a, you know, a diverse recruitment of, of, of participants across the board. Thanks, Charles. Another question was, um, when do you think the uh, access to other English-speaking countries will be available? Yeah, end of Q4, so let's say December 31st, right? Um, but so somewhere along that those lines, right? Uh, we're actually currently actively working on it, uh, at least opening up Connect to the UK, Australia, Canada, all, all that stuff, right? Um, we're, uh, you know, we're, I guess, 95% on target to get that live by the end of the year, uh, at least to open it up and start getting recruit uh, participants on the platform. Um, and then in terms of the part of the prime panels uh, kind of integration that Blake and Hesse talked about, um, that may come a little bit after because you could target international from that as well. Uh, but immediately within Connect, yeah, by the end of the year, for sure, you should be able to do that. Thanks, Charles. Um, any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat. Yeah, I got a question from Marcy regarding uh, Sentry and going into more detail on how we are uh, screening participants within Sentry, what type of questions we're asking, um, how we're getting the attention check questions, the behavioral questions. Um, Hesky, I thought it'd be a good idea if we load up an example of a, a live participant heading through Sentry and we can just talk through. Before I do, just as an introduction, so within Sentry, we, we built out lots of libraries with different kinds of questions. And we have different um, kind of security levels within Sentry that pull from different libraries, ask different number of questions, um, have different uh, technological screening in place. Um, so I'm gonna show you a sample of like a short uh, free screen that pulls questions from four different libraries. Um, but it's a good representation of the kinds of questions that that Sentry has. So hopefully this will work. Um, all right, I'm gonna just hit play. So this is a typical initial screen. Participants will see instructions at the beginning. I'll, I'll pause on each 
question just to give you a little bit of a sense of what each one is. So yeah, this is a question from our association question library. This just measure, measures basic language comprehension and attentiveness. Uh, you can see the, the right answer pretty much should pop out at you. Um, and we initially create these questions using AI. We test them all. We ensure that they're of a particular difficulty level where the correct answer is associated with the uh, word in the question at a particular level. And the incorrect answers are incorrect in a certain way. Um, and we, we validate all the questions um, and we test them and then build them into these libraries. And then Sentry can pull a question at random. Um, from that library for each participant that comes through, you know, and we're doing things like ensuring that um, words that are being uh, used are of a particular difficulty level so that we're not being biased in any ways uh, towards who we're sampling out. Um, this is another example. This is a fake word, um, not a word that you should know. Um, so participants, uh, especially in these larger panels that are, are very used to seeing questions and um, being required to qualify for a survey. So they're, they have a tendency to say yes to questions a lot, even when the answer uh, can't be yes. Uh, so this is a fake word, uh, one of the types of questions that Sentry will ask participants and good respondents will say no, and fraudulent respondents or people who are posing trying to get into surveys and qualify for uh, studies that they're not actually qualified for will often say yes. This is another um, similar type of question. Uh, so if you read the question from memory, do you know the name of every author who ever published a book? Oh, lost it. Um, so no one knows that. Um, <laughs> so again, this is another one of those kind of yay saying type libraries. Um, and then we also have open-ended questions built into the Sentry system that uh, Sentry scores automatically. Um, and it's not just looking for gibberish, it's, it's also actually looking for contextually relevant responses to the questions that are asked. Um, and you can see like we're tapping into different kind of attributes of being a good respondent within this very short uh, pre-screen environment. Of course, there's a lot of technology running in the background too. Um, for example, is the participant copy pasting the answer in, in as opposed to typing, all, all kinds of things like that. So yeah, that hopefully gives you a, a little bit more of a sense of what Sentry is. And as we kind of mentioned during the presentation, um, when it, we're expanding prime panels with Sentry, um, and the reason we're doing that is to make sure that all of our Sentry library questions are translated into other languages. So when we go into those markets, you're getting the same level of data quality that you expect in the US when you're sampling in China or India or where have you. And one thing Heskey didn't mention is we're also when they're in the Sentry environment, we're also recording their screen. So we're seeing if they're copying and pasting, we're seeing if they're um, translating the survey into another language, uh, which happens uh, quite a lot. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's really something that no other panel company is doing with their participants. Um, and that's what really sets prime panels above um, what's available right now. Marthy? Yes, um, thank you. This is so helpful. I have a question about the clinical spree, uh, uh, pre screening in Connect, Charles. Um, I noticed that you can screen for things like anxiety and depression. I have a couple questions. My first question is Could you um, customize the kind of screen that you use, such as a PHQ 9, which of course then would actually ask you to customize a time point? Or do you or are the questions just also sort of self-generated from your from cloud research? So actually, I think um, uh, the, the questions that we had asked the participants did come from those questionnaires, like um, the PH, say PHQ9, and uh, I can remember the other ones that we had added, right? So they're directly from that questionnaire, um, and they just translate into the scale that we calculate uh, for you to target. Yep. Just to add on to that, in terms of the time frame. Um... So this is a new feature that we're still, you know, working on developing and the rate at which we re-ask these questions in part depends on the demand from researchers and how much it's being used. So as we're rolling it out and more researchers start to use it, we, you know, ask it more and refresh those questions more. So um, if it is something you're interested in using and you want to know when the last time people were screened or you want us to update that screening, we're definitely happy to accommodate that. So 
just reach out and let us know. Yeah, and if there's any qualifications you don't see that you would like, you can also reach us, or reach out about that as well, and we can add it to the platform. I'm just curious, based on those um, those questions, a couple of months ago, we had asked um, some Connect people about BMI being available, and um, I was curious if that has become available given the, the presentation that was just shown earlier. Yep, yeah, I, uh, I recall putting that up, yep, and that should be available for you to use uh, you know, today, I mean. Yep. Awesome, okay. All right, I think there are no more questions, um, but if anything comes up, feel free uh, to reach out to any of us. Um, we have our contact us phone links on the website. You have my email, uh, Husky just dropped his. And we're always happy to answer questions and further customize our tools uh, in whatever way you need. Um, really like one of the main missions of our company is like to make research better and easier for researchers to do. And so uh, we, we always want to hear from you what we can do to help uh, continue to develop and improve our products. Um, so please let us know.